Okay, so welcome <clears throat> to How to Yu Gi Oh! Deck Profile 7 Legacies Part 1. So, definitely, this is a deck that holds a special place in my heart as this is the first deck that I've built that follows the lore of the archetype that Konami has created. Another thing I just want to know, like, you, I want to tell you guys, is that uh, this was a fun deck, you know, to make. So, hopefully. You know you will enjoy it you just want to say like you know what i'm a i'm a rebel i like to think of myself as a freestyler that's 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 what it is okay with that being said let's go to let's go to the deck summary but let me go to over some things about this deck real quick before we go to the deck summary okay okay so here is the deck statement and the deck statement is as follows. The seven legacies will unleash their full power when the hero is in a linked state. So that is the clue as to the true power of seven legacies, as its power will be unleashed when cards are linked. So definitely look out for that. Look out for it real soon. Cool. All right. Now I'm going to get to my my deck and when I'll do so I'll go to the main deck first talk about each card individually you know what it's about what it's there for and then I'll go to the extra deck so far in this deck there is no side deck at the moment because this deck is in some limbo um, it's currently really not being played now for in the competitive scene it's just being played for fun as it's been outclassed it's been outmatched um, it's just it's fallen out of favor. It just it's been power crept. We'll need to wait for some cards for to put this deck back into action. With that being said, let's go to the deck summary where you will see the layout of the deck. So as you can see in front of you, World Legacy, World Chalice. Um, this is one of the first monsters you'll see in my Seven Legacy build, a build based on the lore. So World Legacy World Chalice, as you can see there, is one of your key cards and it's going to allow you, while it's in the graveyard, you banish it to add any World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. Now you can see Lee, the World Chalice Fairy. So Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, as you can see there in front of you, um, we only play one. I only play one copy of that. You don't want to play more as it's gonna be. It's gonna break. You really break with that with that card. So I just play one because it's enough. It's enough. You don't need any more really. And it's gonna be one of your cards which you're gonna be special summoning off of the the one of World Legacy World Chalice as you can see there. And here we have the MVP. World Chalice Guard Dragon. So this is the card that you're going to want to be searching or getting added to your hand most of the time. Because, you know, when your cards are linked, exactly, yeah? It means that you, your opponent cannot, uh, t uh, you can protect your cards. You know, this card is really gonna emphasize when any of your cards are linked exactly so that's what it's all about you know like when your cards are linked you know it means that you will have targeting protection for all your monsters so remember that like world chalice guard dragon really shines when your cards are linked okay And so we have World Legacy, World Lands. Now, this is one of uh, the cards, you know, you play a one-off. Really useful for just beating down, you know, cards as it allows you to reduce a monster's attack points by 3,000, you know, attack points. Non-targeting, you know, non-targeting attack reduction. That's very nice. Extremely powerful. So, yeah. 
you only need one copy of it as you can search it with the uh, various cars you know were legacy world chalice you can also search it with mech knight morning stars you can see in the extra deck which i'll talk about that more in the extra deck section and yeah you can search it with various other cards anyways that's all i've got to say about world, world legacy world lands fantastic card and can definitely get you out of a bind and steal you some games let's move on to the next card It is another MVP card, a special card, Orcus, Orcus Nightmare. So Orcus Nightmare is going to be your one of your key cards in this deck, along with um, you know World Chalice Guard Dragon. But anyways, Orcus Nightmare is going to be what you're going to be sending your World Legacy World Chalice. It's going to be activated in your opponent's turn with Babel as well, so you can send uh, you know the Chalice from your deck. It's going to be one of those cards that will set you up turn after turn after turn. So it's definitely a really, really strong card, a very important card. Um, so yeah, so fantastic card, and it's going to really be close to one of your linchpin cards in the deck. Fantastic skeleton. So simple skeleton. Um, it's just going to be one of those, just those that card to just revive your orcus card. So, you know, again, it's going to really shine with your orchestrated babble, which you'll have set on the board, on the field, with your Galatea. We will talk about Galatea more in the extra deck section of this video. But anyways, orchest uh, Symbol Skeleton, you know, is just a revival card, very simple, very basic, just revive your cards. Um, it's going to be really good to revive in Ding, revive Ding on your opponent's turn, Digirisu, send a card on their side of the field, just interrupt their plays, do all the manners with combo wombos, and away you go. So, fantastic card. Let's move on to the next card. This is one of my favorite trap cards in this deck. It's Orchestrated Climax. Now, most, uh, you know, players, when they use this card, they use it very aggressively. And they don't use it, use it defensively. And that's something that needs to be considered. So yes, it is an Omni Negate, and you know you can only activate it when you have an orchestrated, uh, you know, Orcus Monster, sorry, on on the field. And so you know, with it, so there's this misconception that you can only use it, you know, aggressively, you know, to negate your opponent's effect, and you know, as being an Omni Negate, and that's it, because it negates and banishes the card. But you can also use it defensively. For example, while it's in the graveyard, you know, except the turn it is sent, you can banish it to add yourself. Remember the card we were talking I was talking about earlier? Yes, that word legacy lands. So you can add word legacy lands, you know, on your opponent's turn. You know, get yourself, keep yourself relatively safe. And you know, if they're trying to hit you with a strong monster, you know, you just activate lands and reduce their monster's attack by three thousand, you know, permanently. Our favorite word, permanent, that's my favorite word anyway, permanent. So definitely, Orchestrated Climax is going to be one of your best defensive cards that you're going to be using on a regular basis. Cool, let's move on to the next card. World Legacy World Arc. Now, this is a card again that's going to be coming up um, with your Orchestrated Climax that we had before. So again, if you want to be defense, if you want to protect your links from destruction, World Legacy World Arc's got your back. You can add it with Orchestrated Climax, add it with as well World Legacy World Chalice, or you could add it as well with Mech Knight Morningstar. So you have three cards in your deck that can add this card with relative ease. You could also add it with World Legacy Survivor, but more about that card later. Now, uh, just know that this is one of your, this is one of your really most mostly defensive cards. You want to be really adding this card. You usually add this card. I add it anyway when you've set up your board, you've set up your negation, set up your your board that just says no, and add this card just to give yourself that that assur that assurance, that protection, that safety, that your cards, you know, your link monsters are going to be safe from destruction. And here it is, World Legacy Survivor, your fourth MVP card. So, as it stands, your MVP cards that we've mentioned in the deck are as follows. 
your first one, World Chalice Lord Dragon, is your first MVP card. The second one is World Legacy Succession. Your third one is Orcus Nightmare. And your fourth one, which we're mentioning now, is World Legacy Survivor. Now, this is going to be one of your key cards in this deck. It's going to, it's going, it's your key card, starter card, it's everything you want it to be. Not only does this card allow you to excavate five and just set up your Orcus place, but you could add yourself your World Legacy World Chalice again. You can add whatever you want. You can, and with the scope and range that this card has in adding the cards that you need and setting up your Orcus place and setting up all your other place, um, it's, fa it's a fantastic card. Obviously, it has a restriction there saying that you can only make link monsters after you activate this effect, but your deck is mostly a link deck anyway, so that restriction really doesn't matter. Okay, that's it. Let's move on to the next card. Okay, so we'll have our next archetype, part of the Law Crusadia Crawler. So this trap card, Crusadia Crawler, is two um, archetypes in one. It's the Crusadia part of it, and it's the Crawler part. And so with it, it fills the quota of having seven, um, you know, I think five, ar five archetypes, six archetypes, counting all that are there, and then with the Orcus, and then you'll have the Guard Dragon Trap, which we'll get to in a, in a few moments, which will be number seven, counting all seven archetypes. Anyways, leaving that aside, let's talk more about Crusadia Crawler. So Crusadia Crawler is going to be one of your, uh, you know, cards again. It's going to add that consistency as... It's going to be a negation, which you're going to be using with uh, Crusadia Equimax, but equally, when it's activated, yes, you guessed it, you're going to be able to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. This is going to be one of those um, effects you're going to see very often in the Seven Legacy deck, being able to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. So it's going to be really useful. Add yourself the World Legacy World Chalice again, or add the... La world Legacy Lands or the World Legacy World Arc. Whatever you want to add is all at your disposal here. So great card, great consistency boosting card, and again, fits in with the lore. That's what we're all about. That's why I like this deck. It's a really nice, fun deck. Okay. And here you we go. We have our fifth and most important MVP card. Not only is this the fifth um, you know, MVP card that I'll m uh, mention in this video. This card is the linchpin. This is the card that brings everything together. You know, this is the card. This is the special card. Um, before the release of this card, obviously, there was another linchpin in this deck, but we had it. It's banned now, and that was the Synchro Imp. But leaving that aside, the point is, is that Girsu the Orcus Mech Knight is one of your key cards that you're going to really cherish. First of all, the fact that it allows you to send an August or World Legacy card from your deck to the graveyard is absolutely fantastic. Setting up your plays again, sending your World Legacy World Chalice, because you want that card in your graveyard and only playing one copy of it. So if you need, uh, you need it, you can set it down there, you know, search a card in your opponent's turn, or groovy or jazz, it just sets you up with all of the things. Another thing it can do, it can also sell World Legacy World Heart. I'll talk about uh, World Legacy World Heart more when I get to the card, but you know, it just sets you up with so much potential. It sets up your Chalice plays, sets up your Mech Knight plays, sets up your Orcus plays, sets up your Crusadia plays. It sets up every single archetype in Seven Legacies. So it's an extremely important card and definitely worthy to be in Seven Legacy. Okay, so we'll talk about Guard Dragon Cataclysm. So this is the Guard Dragon card that's in this deck. Um, it really, it's going to come up, you know, quite a bit. Um, sometimes, or not all the time, but this is the card that's really going to come up to destroy the back row. Get rid of those pesky floodgates, stuff like that, that we really don't like to see. Um, you know, very easy to activate, as you can, you generally tend to be resolving it 
with the Crusadia Draco card, which is the dragon. Again, guard dragon interacting with Crusadia. Again, we have that interaction. We have that lore coming into play. Fantastic, great card here. So, yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say about guard dragon cataclysm. Let's move on to the next card. And here it is. The win condition. The real win condition of this deck. Sure, we have the extra deck cards that are here and they offer a win condition. But your true goal, your true purpose in Seven Legacies is to win anime style and to break your opponent's soul. As let's read this effect. So its effect state our Vida, rebuild of worlds, its effect is as follows. Uh, cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be sort something you had by there being at least eight or more link monsters with different names on the field or in the graveyard. So you cannot special summon other monsters the turn you special summon this card. This card special summon cannot be negated if this special summon this card is special summon to shuffle all the monsters that are banished on the field and in the graveyards into the deck. Neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this effects activation. So this is your be all and end all. This is where as they say, the shit hits the fan, really. You summon this card and you just clear the board. They can't, your opponent can't respond to this, they can't do anything to this, and part of the lore with this card as it's, you know, this is part of the lore of, you know, the Seven Legacies, as this is the final form of the hero in Seven Legacies. So that's a fun fact for you, so it's the final form, the end stage, and obviously with a very powerful effect. All right, there we go. Let's go to our next card. Okay, so we have World Legacy's Memory. So World Legacy's Memory, I played three copies of this card, as this is the card that's gonna tutor out your MVP, your linchpin, Girsu the Midnight August. So again, obviously we have that restriction that when we use it, we are locked to Mech Knights, but that doesn't really matter. The point of this card is to special summon your Girsu, send the copies of cards that you're going to need to send. Even though you're locked to Mech Knights, it doesn't really matter, as it's going to set you up for next turn. You're going to summon Mech Knight Supreme, you're going to summon your Mech Knight Morningstar, Morningstar's effect is when uh, you'll discard a World Legacy or Mech Knight card to add another World Legacy card from your deck to your hand, more consistency, more nonsense, they just the plays don't stop, you know, that's just how it is. Alright, so let's move on to the next card in this deck. And finally, the last card in the main deck of Seven Legacies is World Legacies Heart. So there's that effect. So let's read its effect. Target one World Chalice Mon, two World Chalice Mons in the graveyard with different names. Add them to your hand. And if you do, and if, and if your Link Monster would be destroyed by battle, you can ban this card from your graveyard, you know, instead. So, how is it able to protect, you know, your Link Monster uh, from battle, destruction by battle? Well, your Link Monster needs to be 
linked. Exactly. And this is where this, um, you know, that word comes in. This is going to be one of your most, that word, you know, linked, is going to be one of the most important aspects of this deck. Everything is related to being linked. And it's going to be important. So this is going to be your main strength, but it is also your weakness. And this is where the issue of this deck comes into play as cards that prevent you from being linked are really not going to do you any favors. Okay, that's it. Let's go to the extra deck now. Alrighty, we have Lib, the World Keyblade Master. So this is a card I think I mentioned before in the main deck part of the video. So this is a card that's going to be your setup monster. Um, as, we can, as you can see with this effect that you can only link summon it if you have a World Legacy card in your graveyard. That's not exactly difficult to do with this deck. Anyways, your, your card that you're going to be setting with this card most of the time is going to be your World uh, Legacy Succession. Um, if you're bored, if you've already have a legacy succession in your hand, then majority of the t then you're gonna set activate the fact is that for legacy sorrows. That's really those are the two cards really you're going to be setting with this card. If you have uh, if your you know your side deck options, you may be setting a legacy struggle as well and other spicy cards, um, like you know, yeah. Uh, I don't really know those names at the moment, but you can set other World Legacy traps from your deck. You can check those out. I'll mention more about them in part two on, you know, the goals of the deck and just the other options there. Cool, let's go to the next card. Okay, so we'll have our next card that you can see in front of you, Mech Knight Spectrum Supreme. Now, this is a card you're going to be making when obviously you're locked into Mech Knights with World Legacy memories. Leaving the lock of that aside, World Le Mech Knight Spectrum Supreme has a fantastic effect there. As you know, if it's not pointing to anything, as you can see there, it cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. That's nothing to be sniffing at. That's a very uh, powerful effect there and definitely needs to um, be taken into consideration. And also the fact that you can send another card in, you know, it's, it's column, just have to summon any mech knight or monster from your deck in defense position. That means that, you know, you can set yourself up, you know, for next turn or, you know, need to to special summon Girsu, send Girsu's effects, Girsu sending World Legacy World Heart, get your, giving your you know your link monsters protection by battle because they are exactly and you know there we go so yeah let's move on to the next card in our extra deck and here it is our floodgate monster nightmare griffin so here's our floodgate monster and also nightmares are part of the seven legacies law wow would you look um, but anyways, Nightmare Griffin is going to, is one of your um, cards that you're going to be making as well on your final uh, end board of this deck. The fact that, as we can see, it's a fact that you, that, you know, on co-link you get to draw and set any spell or trap from your graveyard as well is not something to be sniffed at. That is a very powerful effect. The fact that, you know, special summer monsters can activate the effects unless they are, you know what I'm saying, um, that's really, really powerful and definitely comes into play a lot of the time. Obviously, um, you know, with the way it's worded, with the way it is, it is a, an effect that definitely, um, it, it doesn't see play now and no, most players don't play this card, but do not be fooled not be mistaken, Nightmare Griffin is a floodgate to be feared. Obviously, it can be dealt with with relative ease, but it doesn't um, ch uh, change the fact that it is a powerful effect. And remember, like, if it is exactly
exactly um, you'll be able to protect it with the world chalice uh, guard dragon and other cards okay that's about it <coughs> okay so we have dinky risu the orcus of the evening star so dinky risu here as we can see here is one of the only extra xyz monsters that can special summon itself on top of a uh, link monster so very unique effect very powerful and definitely something and definitely an xyz to be feared um leaving its um dangerous summoning condition aside its effect as well is pretty nasty as it just on summon it can just send a card on your opponent's your opponent controls to the graveyard and because it sends a card doesn't destroy it this means that if that card has any effect 90 percent of the time it's not going to activate as it wasn't destroyed as it was sent so yeah the other effect that it has of attach one of your banished machine monsters to this card as material instead it doesn't come up um but the other effect it has the fact that as well while it has material it can protect your cards from destruction by detaching you know an xyz material you know non-activation is pretty good and definitely is an effect that needs to be um, used as well when you make it that's it really all that can be said about Dingy to the Orcus of the Evening Star and here we have it Crusadia so here's your link three that's going to be part of your crusadia starter um you're going to make it with regulex and then away you go you're gonna what you're going to special under it you're probably going to be special summoning the the word legacy crown if not that the crusadia draco or other such kind of things but generally you're going to be special summoning the crusadia crawler is going to be underneath it special summon underneath it and you're going to get in another search of a card with crusadia crawler CD Ecobax has a fantastic effect as we can see there as it's an, as it's an Omni Negate for any face-up card that is activated. Um, not an effect to be sniffed at. The fact that it gets stronger for each uh, monster that it points to, again, can be a very, uh, you know, strong monster. Can yes, uh, big numbers. numbers. Big numbers. Pay attention to big numbers. Sometimes big, num big numbers And here we have Galatea. Now, Galatea, the Orcus Automaton, as you can see there, is related to the Ib World Chalice Priestess. As we can see, it looks like Ib, the World Chalice Priestess, but in machine form. So, this is, yeah, so that's a fun fact for you there. It's part of the lore, part of the, um, yeah, who knows? Um, definitely research the lore when you have time. But leaving that, um, minor detail aside, Galatea has a fantastic effect. Um, obviously, when, as it states there, when this card, exactly, cannot be destroyed by battle, so it needs to be so that it cannot be destroyed by battle, and we can see that its effect there is, is that you target one banished machine and set one orchestra to fellow trap from your deck um, onto the field. And a fun fact as well, because that effect is setting from your deck onto the field, this card is immune to Ash. As Ash, as it's not adding the card, it's setting the card. So that's definitely something you need to pay, uh, you know, attention to. And sometimes this is a way you can avoid. This is uh, the way you can avoid, uh, you know, being Ash. So this card, Ash Blossom, doesn't work on Galatea as it doesn't add the card; it sets the card. Yeah, very interesting interaction there, and definitely something you need to pay attention to. 
Alrighty, let's go to the last card in our extra deck. Okay, so we have the last card, Mech Knight of the Morning Star. So as we can see, they are very easy to make, especially if we had that Mech Knight start um, with memories. So we can see that if Link summoned, you discard a Mech Knight or a World Legacy Monster, which is not exactly difficult to do in this deck. And when you do so, you are able to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. Fantastic effect, fantastic card, great extender, great searcher, great everything. This is going to be one of your cards. It's going to help you protect your board, protect everything that you want to do, add a negation, add whatever. Oh my days, Morningstar is uh, going to give you a great morning for your deck. And that's really all there is. You can read its effect there to get the secret spice that it does as well. And that's really all there is to it with Seven Legacy. So I've talked to you about, you know, the deck. Uh, you've seen the secret spice with, you know, the key words there, the key word that I've talked about. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so we'll go to deck grading real soon. Hey, it's time for the deck grading. So, oh yeah, Alexa, can you give me that sound effect? Okay, here we go, Alexa. Do it now. Thank you, Alexa. So, it's a grade A. After you've seen, obviously, that, yeah, I give my deck, I give Seven Legacies a deck grading of A. It's, you know, it's a good deck, could be worse, but really, that's all it is. So let's go to the conclusion real quick, and that's about it. Okay, so hence why it's fallen out of favor. That doesn't mean it's not a bad deck. If you say, it's a good, it's a strong deck, um, you, you, you can get protection from targeting, protection from destruction, protection from targeting and destruction, which is pretty good. You can also just deal huge damage with big numbers. Exactly, big numbers. But apart, you know, apart from all of that, there is there is that weakness. Obviously, um, we don't have enough uh, support cards that have come out at the moment. Maybe in twenty twenty two, maybe I'll come back to it. You know, twenty twenty two, see what cards come out in the various booster boxes and side sets. Maybe there will be a card that I could use to revive this deck and bring it back into the forefront. But for now, it's just, it's stuck in limbo, it's there. Definitely a worthy deck to make for just, you know, for just some fun games. Good for some locals, but really it is not a deck you want to be taking to the higher competitive play. In its current state, there is still way more work that needs to be done. Obviously, I'll go to part two where I'll talk about the goal of the deck. I'll talk about its win condition, you know, there. And I'll also talk about the honorable mentions there. I'll talk about, you know, the several ways you could play this deck. Maybe give it some new life, a new lease. Maybe it could, potentially, you could put it into that next level, that next stratosphere, if you so will. Uh, so definitely look up part two for other things. So currently, and before I end this video, I just want to say like, just remember this deck has no side deck at the moment because, you know, yeah. I'll mention more about the side deck in part two. And with that, that's where I'll end this video. Okay. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands. Um, hopefully I'll see, hopefully you know, you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel and uh, wait a couple of minutes and you'll, seconds, sorry, and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel. Hope to see you soon and thank you.